Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, Roy McConnell here. It is 3.31. We are scheduled to start at 3.30 and, as usual, uh, go for one hour until 4.30 or until we are done. So today uh, on the agenda, we've got uh, Wendy uh, talking about um, uh, Braille 2000 and some of the uh, some of the features that it has that perhaps are a little bit more advanced than what you might be using on a typical day-to-day -day basis uh, with that uh, with that software. So uh, we look forward to uh, Wendy sharing. Um, her extensive knowledge about that uh, about that uh, software program, uh, but before uh, we get going again, uh, we've got a prepaid uh, commercial announcement uh, coming your way from uh, Nels Nicolaisen, uh, chair for the 2018 uh, Vision Teachers Conference. So here you go, Nels. Take it away, man. Thank you, Roy. Just checking. Can everybody hear me, Roy, etc.? Yes, perfectly. Oh, lovely. I'm just going to assume the long list of people, Mickey and Leslie and Tracy, and all those wonderful people can hear me as well, even though they're all muted. Hi, Wendy. How are you doing? I'm good, Nels. Yay! I, I haven't seen you in so long. I know. Ah. It's been a while. Okay, prepaid announcement Roy was talking about. I'm assuming my, my colleague from, from Calgary, Stephanie, will be logging on shortly. I don't see her on the list yet but uh, she was having difficulty. So uh, I logged in last month to say hello to all you fine Braillists. You are the frontline people of all our Braille kiddos, and I want to thank you personally, and I actually know most of you personally, so that's a really good thing. Um, as many of you, hopefully, when you logged in last month, knew I was trying to do a promo plug for next year's conference. We had one last year in British Columbia, and it's every two years. There's an annual conference that educators across Canada uh, get together, and the pre-conference usually has something really wonderful for Braillists. And this one, of course, as the usual topic for you guys is UEB, or Unified English Braille. So there was a whole pre-day conference of that. If you want more details on that, one of your co-presenters today, which would be Gayla Garland, she can tell you a little more details about that. But uh, the idea is next year when the conference rolls around, and it happens to be rolling around into the Edmonton area, so those of you who are close enough, that'd be Calgary people as well as people way off in Lloydminster, could come to this conference and, again, learn either in the pre-conference or any of the sessions during. So this is not only a promotional plug to say, make sure your principals and your staff at your school next year know that for professional development, you'd really like to attend this conference. And we're hoping to keep costs down to a reasonable for everyone to attend, uh, as well as if you're staying at the hotel, whichever one we end up going with. We're still negotiating whether it's going to be West Edmonton Mall or not. But we'd also love it if you guys would volunteer. And there's wonderful opportunities to volunteer at the conference itself, whether that means you get to offer sighted guide for one session to uh, one of the participants who flew in from Montreal and they happen to be using a guide dog or a white cane and you get to guide them to their next session as your contribution to the volunteering of the uh, conference. Or maybe you decide to jump on the bandwagon with Gala and whoever else might be a transcriber under her. And when it comes to the accessibility of all of the different materials at this workshop, you could help parti per participate by making all those UEB materials alongside with Gala. And it would be a great opportunity to work side by side with her as well as gain that extra experience. And hopefully our presenters send you stuff at least two months ahead of time so that you're able to produce it. That's really it. If you want to uh, see more about the conference, I just posted the link on the chat window. So if you haven't clicked on the chat button at the top, you should do that now. And hopefully it appeared to everybody, the Seeing Beyond the Horizon conference in May next year. There's the link. And if you go to the link and you are interested in volunteering, but you haven't quite figured out what, there's a link right on the website that says Call for Volunteers, and you can fill that out. And really the best Part about this thing is it will not go, it won't fly off the ground unless we have volunteers to help make it fly. So please buckle your seat belts and help us get the airplane off the ground. I think that's it for my babbling, hey Roy? And that was indeed some babbling. Amen. Okay, but, good. <laughs> but thank you very much for it. Appreciate it.
All right, okay. logging off. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks, Al. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, uh, Wendy, it is over to you, my dear. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me enough. I can adjust my volume if need be. Um, just a kudos to Gayla Garland, too. She's standing by to help me if I um, stumble or if there are questions posed or if I forget anything. We got together and worked through a little bit of what we're going to show you today. Um, Roy said advanced. For some of you, it might be advanced. For others, it might not be. Um, I worked through the program outside of what I normally do in my box and found a few extra things that I'll share with you today. And I'm just hoping to introduce Braille 2000 to those of you that are new to it, that will, this will allow you to get started with it, as well as those that are already using it daily. And um, maybe, maybe you'll learn something new today. That's the goal. So um, just a little bit of background. I know last month, um, Neil presented on Duxbury, and he had a good point. You know, we get comfortable using the software that we're familiar with. My history goes back to, um, when I started in the Braille world, I did everything on the Perkins in my, in my course, and that was out in Ontario. Even my final exam, everything was on the Perkins. So I started at the school, ready for the student in September. Nels happened to come out and say, well, here's a computer, Braille something. And I went, wow, okay. So I plugged in W-E-N-D-Y. He said, what are you doing? I said, clearly, I don't know. Give me the Perkins, I can show you. But, um, my idea was, hey, I'm fine, I can do the Perkins. Nothing of software was introduced in my course. I knew nothing about six key entry. And knowing what I know now, boy, my student would have graduated long and I'd still be back doing grade 10 resources on the Perkins. So um, I am comfortable in Braille 2000 because at the time, Edna McLafferty was my mentor, is still, and that's what she was using. I didn't know of Duxbury at the time. And so Braille 2000 was what the school purchased, and with the support of Nels as the vision consultant and Edna as the transcriber, we proceeded with Braille 2000. I, I do have Duxbury. I'm just not as familiar, or I don't use it daily as I do Braille 2000. So with that, I'm going to uh, walk you through some of Braille 2000. So I brought up my screen. I have an icon on my screen, and I just click on that and it brings up my Braille 2000. So I've already done that. I've adjusted this here. I can go even bigger, but I've adjusted it so you guys could see a little bit easier today. So I'm gonna leave it big, and hopefully it doesn't mess me up. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to go back to a little bit smaller. But anyway, right off the bat, we're just gonna show you how to import a file and save a file, and then I wanna work through this tool panel toolbar with you and show you some of the neat things that Braille 2000 does. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to show you here this import button. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to insert and I'm going to choose to insert a Braille file. It's going to give me options where to look. I can look on my desktop. I can look on my jump drive, which is called Kingston in here and I have a whole schwack of files, but I'm going to go back to my desktop, and there I've put a couple things on for this webinar, and it's going to be a Braille 2000 file just because that's what I've saved it as, so I'm going to click on that, and it's going to open. So there we have, that's just a simple way, so you import, and you can even insert a print file if you'd like, the same either off your desktop in your documents or wherever you've saved it. So then to save it, you may save it here if you go menu, file, save as, and I'll show you different ways to do that too. So I'm gonna save this one back to my desktop and I'm gonna call it, let's just call it file one and it's a B2K file, and that'll save it. And if I minimize this to show you now, it's saved it over here onto my desktop. Back into Braille 2000. So that's just an easy way to get in to files and to have something open. If you wanted, to, you could work through Braille 2000 
and open a new work area. It would give you a blank one, and then you could go again into import and insert a different file. But for now, actually I will, I'll insert my next one. This takes a minute because it's a larger file. There we go. So there's my title page of a novel. Okay, so now we're just going to work through the control panel on the left here. So first of all, if we look at this little window called Help, if you click on that, we have all our little help topics that Bob Stepp is the inventor of Braille 2000, and he's gone in and put a little help window in here. So you can find a lot of topics in that help window if you're having some issues getting started. And we're just going to get out of that and go back. So that's your little help window. Bob doesn't mind um, emails as well. I know there's been some glitches in version 2 that we're still working on sorting out. And um, we've been keeping track, and Ed has been good at sending him emails. I also noticed just the other day that a new version of um, Braille 2000, I think a couple days ago, came new, and I'll show you where to fetch that after. I didn't want to mess with anything because I knew I was ready for the webinar and everything was working the way it was. Sometimes with an update, there tends to be the odd little glitch, and I just didn't want to mess with that today. So now if we look at our menu tab and we hit the menu, we're going to look at a couple things first in Adjust. So here, if you notice, my suspect words are pink. I know when it comes with system default, I think it's red. I don't particularly like red screaming at me. So if we go to our menu and then we go to our display, we can click on all sorts of things. So if I go down here and show you, for instance, the suspect words with the B, I've changed it to this light magenta. We can change it to any color we want to suit us, make it happier on our eyes. So if I went and changed it back to red, clicked OK, it changes that. You can also change your interpret bar. So see how mine is kind of a light blue. They call that a light blue. You could change that as well. So I'll show you that again. If you go Menu, Adjust, and then your Display, we could change that. So I'll show you under the interpreter, it's light blue. And if I decided, oh, OK, today I feel like I want to look at green. We can change that to green. And if we click that back out and show you now, it's green. So that's just a little personal touch. It doesn't change your Braille. It just changes how you look at your screen. And if you look at your screen as many hours in a day as I do, I like to customize a little bit. OK, so next, if we look at the menu, and same under Adjust, we're going to go over to Document. And in this case, I know we have two sizes of Braille paper we use. We use 40 cell, cells per line in our large Braille paper. In the smaller Braille paper that's 8.5 by 11, it's only 30 cells. So we would change this to 30. We would apply it. You, if you were doing it all for younger grades, 30 cell line, which is the younger grades, and you were doing a lot of it, you could change it to your system default. Or if you were just working on it for one resource, you could change it to the all of file and see how it shrunk it down to 30 cells per line. Now I would have to go in and adjust because my title page now is carried over to the second page. But it's gone ahead and shrunk that down. So again, that was menu, adjust, document. I'm going to go back and put it to 40 cells. And then I want it to apply to all of file. And if you look here where it says left and right padding for centered text, according to Braille formats, we need to have three blank line, three sorry, three blank cells on either side of a centered heading. So this is already programmed in for us. It won't allow us to go any further, and it gives that margin on either side of the three cells. So that's what that little is there. I I only do single side embossing. I don't have an interpoint embosser, so it's ticked to my single side there. And I'm going to click it back to all of file, and it's returned it now to my 40 cells. 
Okay, one other thing I want to show you in Adjust. is emphasis. There is a couple different places where we can look for emphasis. But in this one, it shows us here plain italics, bold, and underlined. So here, it says current paragraph, but we could highlight something. Oops. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to highlight something. There's an easier way to do it, but I'm just going to show you this. Highlight this. Menu. Adjust. Emphasis and I want that to go to italics. And then it says highlighted text, so that's yes. And so here it's added, I'm binging, here it's added my italics passage indicator, the two cells there, and it has terminated it here, because so that's all that I highlighted to go into italics. Okay. We're going to move on now to under the menu bar. And there's different ways to do do. So that you can go menu at the top, click do. It brings up this whole table. Or there's a do button halfway down in your toolbar here with the little light bulb, do. That brings up everything. And more times than not, I just right click and it brings up most of the do's and what I need to have happen right here. So it's what you get comfortable with and how you work your keyboard. And towards the end of this webinar today, we're going to show you a lot of shortcut keys um, for people that are having issues with their wrist and don't want to use the mouse as much. Then there's a whole bunch of different keys. So anyway, right click, do, middle of the control panel do, or menu do. So we're going to go up here to this do for now. They all do the same. And an interesting thing, and I don't know if anybody is aware of this, but the grade relaxer. So the grade relaxer, for people that are um, transcribing for multiple students, it's nice to have this grade relaxer. So I just have something under student one. You can adjust the profile. So if your student is just beginning to learn Braille and they've learnt certain amount of their whole word alphabet contractions, you can click off the ones that they have to make that all green, or click it and say, oh, they don't know rather, they don't know quite, they don't know people, and then you can work your way down here. One thing to note in this grade relaxer that hasn't been updated to UEB is it still has the cuddled words. In UEB, we no longer use those cuddle words, so you have to make sure if you're using this grade relaxer that those are turned red. So that will just show you that um, it won't do that. And then also, we don't use the BLE contraction anymore, and we don't use the ATION and the ALLY. So this is something that Bob hopefully will adjust. And then We've got some short form words. We don't use the o'clock anymore. So anyway, you can do that, and, and then you can go um, generate a report or push OK, and that'll update it. So that would have gone through and done this file into that grade relaxer for that student. And if you wanted to, let's say I just did that, and I wanted to generate a report. So if your teachers wanted to see what your students were, were working on, or if your vision consultants came and they wanted you to work on certain um, contractions, wherever there's a little heart that's telling you that the student is aware and using those contractions. So you can adjust files. You can um, insert them fully, contracted Braille, transcribe them, and then adjust them to students. So even if you had two students looking at the same article, but one student was not fully contracted and the other was, you could adjust the profiles. And this saves you from having to tr transcribe the same resource more than once. You just adjust the profile. Okay, and now we're going to go back to do. And we looked at the grade relaxer, and now we're looking at the layout. I'm going to skip over that one and click on layout control. This layout control, I was having trouble. I was having a blank line on my line 25 was always blocked out, and it wouldn't let me put any Braille on that line. It just happened in a couple of resources, and I don't know if it's just the way it was formatted. But anyway, 
this box here, skip page number line, this was ticked off. So then it wouldn't allow any Braille. If that is ticked off, automatically line 25 is, is um, blanked out and it doesn't allow you to add Braille to it. So if you're having trouble with that, you can check this and uncheck it and that will allow you to use Braille on line 25. Um, that's all I wanted to show you in there, I believe, because that's the problem I ran across. Okay, I'm going to insert a new file for a minute here so I can show you a couple other things. Okay, so this is a table of contents. I'll put my interpreter bar on so you can see. Table of contents. Chapter 1. So now if we go to menu, do, and we go line number, the chapter 1 starts on page 4, so I'm going to put 4 in there. I want to have guide dots because there's more spaces, so it allows the Braille reader to have the guide dots long. And then we click on that, and it inserts with the guide dots my page number. So again, for my chapter 2, menu, do, line number, and now this one is page 8, so we're going to click OK, and that allows, again, for the next page number for that chapter. So when I inserted it, it, it looked like this, it had the double spaces and the pages, so then I would just, I would just work through this and either right click on here, do, line number, or I can right click, do, line number, and then I would add page 11, and OK. And work through my table of contents that way, and then all my page numbers are nicely lined up with the space, with the um, guide dots to help the student work across to the page numbers. So then the next thing, if I was working through this, this is where my table of contents ends. I now have my chapter one. So then the next thing I want to do is bring this down to the next page. So instead of doing that, that way, just space, 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 I could go menu, do, nope, sorry, this one, I'm just going to right click and go braille, page break. So again, that's right click, braille page break, that jumps it down to the next page. So anything now that's, I hope you can see on my screen, it's light blue, that won't allow anything to be brailled in there. So even if we work now in the rest of this file and things get shifted around, move down, move back, it won't mess with this page. So everything with, that's been formatted and saved will stay like that. So that's, that's pretty cool. So that's our page braille, page, braille page break, sorry, tongue twister. So now I want to number my pages in this file. So if we go menu, do, and I could do page numbering, up comes this little box. And this is a novel, it's not a textbook, but I want to have, I want to show my print and my braille, so I'm leaving it as that. I said I think that number four was for my first chapter one, so we'll put number four in there. And it is no longer a um, transcriber generated page because it's into the chapter, so it's going to be our braille page one. We click OK, and if you notice at the top, that's our print page number, number four, the right top. And at our bottom, it didn't change for some reason. It's making me a liar. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Do page numbering. Okay. I'm not sure why that didn't change. I'm going to see if it goes next time and does that. For some reason, it's being stubborn. I'm going to do a new work area. I'm going to import a different file. Let 
I'm going to see if this works. OK, let's try this again. Menu, do, page numbering, number four, and I want this to be number one. There we go. That worked. OK. So then the next thing, we're going to just assume that we have a lot more Braille on the page and that our second page, our page number five, starts at this paragraph. I'm going to put my interpreter on. So it starts at Cammie's mom rolled her eyes. So then we can go back to here, do, which is a long way to do it. And we can go next, print page. So automatically, it's going to enter your next page, which is number five. If for some reason your number four went through onto another page, it would automatically just show up in your right-hand corner as A number four. And until you go for your next page number, then that will insert your number five there. OK? Uh, again, you can do it through here, or you can do it with your right click. Page numbering. OK? Okay, and because this is the novel, I'm going to assume that I want a running head. So either I can do the chapter name or the novel name. I tend to do the novel name. So here we can go menu, do, and then if we go down to running head, it allows you to type in here. So I'm just going to say the river and click OK. I want it on all pages the same. There's a little box up here, and I want it on all pages, and I click OK, and now it's added at, at the top, the river. Chapter 1, my format has to come down, but we're not talking about format. So anyway, OK, so again, that's menu, do, and you can go down to do running head, and then it comes up, and you can adjust that if you need to. Please feel free to ask any questions, or if I'm going too fast, or if you want me to, to show something else, then I'm happy to do that. Okay, so I'm going to open just a new work area here, a blank page. And for the next thing we're going to go in, we're going to go Menu, and I'm going to point out a couple things in Edit. So here, we're going to look at Insert. And in here, this is where I was playing around, I tend to not rely on everything. And this is important for you also to know your Braille and not just assume that a, pro that a resource can be copied and put into Braille 2000 and everything's going to be luckily split. Um, it doesn't always work that way. I'm going to show you an example here of a couple French words. So we have chateau. I'll put my interpreter bar on. And we have mare. And that's how it looks when it's first when I first came across it in an example I was doing. So now if I go menu, edit, sorry, menu, edit, insert, we have international characters. So on Chateau, I know that there is the accent circumflex, and it's on my A. So first of all, if I go back to where I want it, I want it on my A. And then find my special character. Oh, no, my international character, sorry. And go to my circumflex, and I want the A. Now, you have to be super careful because if you look now on my interpreter bar, it's not just given me my accent. It's also put the letter A in there. So we need to get rid of our initial A that was there. And we have our A with our circumflex accent. And the next example here with mirror, we know that if one of our accented letters is part of a contraction, we can't contract that. So ER, menu, edit, insert my international character. And this time, I want the Grav accent on the E. And again, it's given me an extra an E. 
So I need to remove my one E. So you have to make sure you still know your rules. You still don't just think, okay, I'm going to click that A and it's going to put it in there. It's going to show that you have an extra letter. So that's just something I wanted to, to point out to you that the international characters are there. And, uh, but be careful how you use them. And I have gone through and checked them with, with the manual. And as far as I know, there aren't any mistakes there. But when in doubt, check your book, please, and don't just assume there aren't any, any errors. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm just going to say the following has been changed. Oops. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So we can go to our menu again. We can go edit and back to our insert. And we can now insert RTN symbols. So I'm not sure where I left my cursor. Let's see if this, okay, let's put it there. So menu, edit, insert, RTN symbols, and I want my opening one. So there we go. We know that a TN starts in cell seven, so I'm gonna squish it over. It shows, it's showing me here what cell I'm in, cell six, cell seven. And then again, I can go to my menu, edit, insert, my TN symbol, and now my closing one. And those are correct. Those are our new ones. So I tend to know, know them. I just happen to know them because I've done them enough before I discovered this. So if you know them and you can um, direct to input them there, probably faster than going to your toolbar and finding that, then that's fine. But if you're not familiar with them and just know that they're there, then you can insert them and be done with it and um, know that those are correct. I did double check that. So sometimes when we're brailing, even if it's a worksheet for, for a student, the teacher's worksheets, and she might refer to something in a box on a worksheet that's important. So in Braille, we want to retain that box. So this is another thing that we can insert, the boxing line. So again, we go to, to Menu, Edit, Insert. And if we go down here, we have boxing line. Now it gives us the option. So obviously we're gonna start with our top boxing line. So there you go. I used to go like this. I used to manually put that in. <laughs> so obviously this is, this is better. So let's just say we had a couple things in our box. That's wrong. <laughs> and then again, we can go menu, edit, insert boxing line, and then our bottom. And those are correct. Our top boxing line is our lower G, and then our, bo our, our bottom boxing line is our upper. So that's just a way to do your boxing lines, and then you can continue on that. So those are a few things that I just wanted to point out when you go to menu and edit. I have, I'm not going to go through everything, but those are things that you might come across and that you might want to use. We did show you a little bit about file and import. So it's also done there in the, in the menu bar. And then otherwise, right here, there's the import button. So you can find things in Braille 2000 in multiple places and whatever works best for you. And you'll get comfortable in, in working. Um, I just want to point out there is a way. We're just going to go new work area. And um, I'm going to down here, put this on print mode. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm gonna open up one of my files here on my desktop. This is a Word file. And I just wanna, let's say I just wanna import this part. So I can highlight that, I can go Control C for copy. Then I can go back to my Braille program. It's in print. And then I can go Control V. Oops. Not, oh, there we go. Okay. So, and then I can go back and hit the B for Braille, and it'll show you. Now, 
sometimes if you don't insert it when it's in the print mode, your contractions and some things can go a little bit off. But now if we click over to the Braille and we look, we put our interpreter bar on and the people's contracted, the will's contracted. So it looks like we've, we're using the but. Our contractions worked out okay that way. So um, you can copy and paste a Word file and that was just something I showed you there. But the important thing is to make sure that you do it in the print mode first and then convert it back to the Braille and everything should be fine. Don't just assume again that everything's fine. You still need to proof and format according to rules and making sure everything's fine for your student there. Okay, where are we here? Then again, we can, in this menu bar, we can do, um, nope, I'm sorry, I'm going file. There we go, file, menu, file. And then we can do a new work area again here if we wanted to click on it. We can also do it from where I've done it on the control panel halfway down if I get out and show you. Um, new here. So again, there's multiple places where we can look at stuff. File, if we wanted to open a file, we could do it here. Okay. Now, I'm going to go out of this, this toolbar just for a minute. And this is this is was new to me. I didn't even look back in the old version to find out if it was there. But I've noticed this math little button here. So we're just going to click on that for a minute. And I'm going to, actually I'm going to click back for a sec just to get a new work area. And then we're going to click on this math button. So I just kind of worked through some of these and some are not great and some are okay to use. So when we click on this first one, it shows some of our math tools here for greater than or equal to, and that is correct. I've gone through and looked at these um, to make sure that they're correct. Not equal to. I tend to direct input all these just because I don't know I don't know if I'm more trustworthy, I think, than the program, but, or if I do them the first couple times when I use the program, I'll make sure I look them up in the, the guidelines to make sure that they are correct. So that's that little button. And if we work through, if some of them are not all up and running yet, obviously that's noisy. In this one, we have our times divides and our bullet symbol. So if we click on those, let's just say, number one, and then times, number two, equals. Then that shows us that it's inserted our multiple. This ring operator, I was a little bit confused about what that meant. And that ring operator is not the degree symbol. It's the same as a hollow dot. So um, in the technical guidelines, there is an example on page 53 where they use the hollow dot. And I'm not entirely sure where this ring operator heading came from, but um, that was something I had to look up because I wasn't familiar with that. And then our bullet. Oftentimes in lists we use bullets and that's the correct bullet symbol. There are a few arrows here that um, if you're doing something and you want to click the, the right pointing arrow and, and then no, I've, sorry, I didn't have a space there. Let's go left pointing arrow. So some of the arrows, again, I would double check in your book to make sure that those are all, all correct before you just assume that they're in there correctly. Um, there are Greek letters. That's not the Greek letters. Where are my Greek letters? Now that I've extended this over, it's, it's in a different um, order than what I have in my notes. But here you go, here's some Greek letters. And you have to, let's just click on beta and see what comes up. So there you go. So that's the lowercase Greek for beta. Know that if you wanted a capital, you would still have to insert your capital indicator. And then it, they even have a few different things here for math. I just want to show you. So if you had a fraction, they've showed you the, the opening fraction. 
indicator and then A over B and your closing fraction indicator. You have to remember that some of these symbols require a grade one indicator. So um, you would have to insert those and know the rules when those are needed. So in this case, we would need a grade one indicator before the opening fraction indicator and before the closing one. So we could either insert it here before or we could use the grade one word indicator and that would work for the whole for the whole equation. Um, just to show you an example of a square root expression. So this is your opening radical. They have x and then your closing. So if it was the square root of 25, and again, we would need our grade one indicator on our opening because that has a grade two contracted meaning. Then our number sign puts us into grade one mode, so we wouldn't need it before our contracted meaning for ing or this is the close of our square root. Anyway, that's overlapping a little bit of UEB rules, but you have to know that when you use some of these tools that it doesn't automatically have your grade one indicator if it's required in the context you're working. So another thing to be aware of. So I have not used a lot of this in the, in the math that I've done. I'm, I have a couple more units to do for grade three level. I'm not sure that I'll be able to come across some of this, but I'm going to try it and um, just work through it and see how it works. And then at the bottom, there's something that's called a chart map. And it has all sorts of different things on here that you can click on. If they're, if they're darker, then they're OK. If they're the lighter gray, they're not, they're not worked yet. So um, I'm just going to get a new line again and go back into that chart. And if we go under punctuation and do our, there's our, our dash. So some of those are there. Some of those we know. It's probably faster for us to direct input than to search for them in here. But it's just interesting to know that that's there. And he's working on, Bob Stepp is, is Braille 2000 guy is working on making it a little more user friendly for some of our math. Um, I know Duxbury does it a whole different way. And I'm not completely familiar with that and the math type and everything involved. But anyway, I wanted to point that out to you. That's something completely new to me. And it is there under the math little tab. So now back to tools. Um, if we look at this file management button, this big one here now, and click on that, this is where you can get your software update. So if I click on that and scroll down here, the latest update was made yesterday. OK, I'm not that out to lunch yet. So that was just yesterday. It came up on my computer when I first opened it this morning saying there was an update. I chose to ignore it for now, like I said, just to work through this program, and I'll install that later. So all you have to do is click on that and click OK. There's no cost to upgrading in Braille 2000. And then it would do an update. It would shut down. You'd have to restart your computer. So we're going to ignore that for now because we don't want to mess with that. And then under File Management too, if you've lost a file or you think, OK, I know my filing system isn't always the best, and usually I can find things. But if I can't find something, you can click on History. Now, this is going to take just a few minutes because I have a lot of things that I've brailed in this program. But I just want to show you that it does list it by, there we go. It lists it by alphabetical order. But on these ones, I have a number two in front of it. But if I scroll down, then it starts with a snicker of. And then it will it'll go through a bunch of files. And hopefully, it hasn't disappeared completely. I can find something that I'm looking for in there that I've done, or if I've questioned what I've done, or if I've had a question saying, hey, have you done that novel? And I can't find it where I put it elsewhere. I can go into that again. So that's your file management button and history. And that's the same place you go for file management and back for your software update. OK, moving on. You guys are quiet. I want to show you how to find and replace something. So I'm going to get a new work area. And I need to import a file. So I'm importing a Braille file. And I'm going to bring in my 
novel again. It takes a few minutes when it's a big file. I think this one is over 100 pages, so there we go. Okay, so now my suspect words are still screaming at me in red, so we can go back and change that now that we know how to do that. But for this, I'm going to show you how to do a find and replace. So I'm going to scoot over to my page 73 because I know there's something there I want to show you. Okay, and I'll put my interpreter bar on just so you can see. Here we have a long dash, and we know in Braille, unless in our resource there's long dashes and short dashes, we only use the short. So I have a long dash there. If I go down to my line 9 here, there's another long dash there. So I want to change those. So I, I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go over here to my search button. And I'm going to find text. I've already highlighted it, so it puts it right there for me. I'm going to replace it with just my regular dash. I want to replace all. And I'm starting from the top, so we're going to replace all. So now, if you can see here, it's replaced it to just a dash. I go down to my line 9, it's replaced it to just a dash. But now, it's saying that this word is suspect, and it is because next to a dash, we can use our alphabetic word signs. Next to a long dash, if I put that extra cell in there, we can't use. So we have to remember to go back and change that to our alphabetic, in this case, our just. So even though we've done that and changed it out, and it's gone through and changed it through my whole file, I can't remember where there's more, but there are more, it'll change it through your whole file. So that's kind of neat to save you going in and manually changing it through this whole article, through the whole resource. There's a lot of those in there. So that's your find and replace. OK, if we look at this adjust button here, it's the same that we can access when we go up here. So again, there's just two places in Braille 2000 you can find it. And again, we have our insert button here. This is where our international characters are. This is where I did the TN symbols. This is where we did some boxing lines. But that's the second place, because the first place we did was up here, was Menu, Edit, Insert. So it's a little bit faster. It's right there, Insert, on our toolbar. And then we have a Do button here. So this is where we can also, up in our tool, do, it's there, multiple places, do. And don't forget your right click. You can do a lot of the do's there. And that's one I tend to use is the right click. Then if we look down here at the ABPS, I only ever use the Braille view. And if you look at the bottom here, it'll sell say, excuse me, Braille Writer. And if we change it to the print view, it says typewriter. Now this is like the ASCII view, which I do very seldom in and don't have my head wrapped around it, but some of you might be more familiar with it. And then this is the source view. And I'm not entirely sure when but it's, it's showing the source view. So something to do with files, and I'm sorry, I'm not in familiar with that. So Braille view and print view. And then next to that, we have our four little buttons, and these are our emphasis buttons. Now, a lot easier to do it right here than to try to go through here and find it down here and go through it. So right on the toolbar, we have our emphasis. So let's just say, I want this, so I'm going to write, I'm clicking that, highlighting that, and let's say we want it bold. So now, 
It's gone ahead and bolded that sentence that I highlighted. It's given me my bold passage indicator at the beginning here. And then at the end, so all those words are bold for that sentence. And it's given me my termination indicator for my bold termination indicator here because that's the only part that I highlighted and then it's carried on in the regular text. I just completed the novel and every first chapter of every, every first paragraph of every chapter was bold. So then I could just highlight that, bold it, made sure that my, my, it was passage and terminating and we were good to go. So that's a lot easier just to access those right there. I'm gonna go back to my title page here. So this little button here will center. So if I was doing everything left aligned and I had a title and I wanted it centered, instead of the old way in our course where we have to figure out how many cells for center, we can just kind of cheat a little bit in Braille 2000 and click this button and it puts it right into the center for us, centered text. So again, if you don't want it centered, it'll take it to the margin or center it back. Okay, so next, we've done our file, we're ready to go, we have our running head, we have our page numbering, we're good to go, we're set to emboss. So we have our emboss button now, just beneath halfway. So if we click on our emboss button, the emboss that I'm using right now is the Romeo 25, it's good to go. I can either pick all my pages, or I can just pick from pages one to 10, and it'll emboss, or you can do selected pages. More times than not, I'm doing all. But anyway, so that's your emboss button. Your print button, I have to manually change mine to my printer. Now on here, you can do sim braille dots. You can also change this to print, and then print this off. So again, I have to change it to my printer and I want it to be then interpreted Braille, and it will Braille off the print. I use this a lot when I do little novels. Um, that way I insert the print opposite the Braille. So if a student is reading in class with a partner, or if they're taking home reading to the parent or to the teacher, then the print copy is opposite the Braille. I always put it on the left so the Braille student has their Braille on the right for easier reading, and then the print copy is on the left. So when they open up a double page, print is on the left and the Braille is on the right, and then that student can be partnered with a sighted student or with a parent at home, like I said, or a teacher for reading practice. Um, and it works really well to do that. Okay, let's go back to Braille. Now this style here, I have it centered because this is a title page and I want it centered. If I didn't, I can click in here and we can say, okay, I want everything in box paragraph one, one. I can apply it to my current paragraph. Let's just say, and it's taken it over to one, one. Let's just, or I can highlight something, go in here and check my style. I'm just gonna say one, one just to show you apply it to my highlighted text, it moves everything into one one. So that's your style button. Um, I think there's probably something down in here that I haven't done. So this is all, when I inserted the file, it was all boxed, but if I wanted it to be paragraphs, I'm just going to show you a section of it. And I want it to be indented three, our paragraphs start in three, carry over in one. I don't want it double spaced, so I'm not clicking that. I'm applying it to my highlighted text. You could apply it to the whole file. It says current paragraph, highlighted text, all of file or rest of file. We'll just say highlighted text for now. Sometimes it doesn't like coming out of it. There we go. And now it's all started those in and it is, I mean, don't look at the spacing because this was a wonky file I worked in. But anyway, so it's taken it to cell three, carry over in one. That's what I wanted to point out to you. Okay, and then next is just our interpreter bar here. So we can have it off, we can have it on. We know how to go in and change menu, 
adjust our display if we want to change the color of it. Um, and we can interpret our print. We can change it in here. I hardly ever go in there. I just turn it on. And it'll interpret. OK. Now, this next little box is kind of important. It, it is a little box when my toolbars, but it's not such a little one here. So right now, it's showing that it's um, the International Council of English Braille, and it's UEB, and it's contracted. If I went to Other, and I, I wanted it in um, different languages it has, it has that I could do it in, oh, just a second here. This is where I wanted to go, uncontracted. And let's just say apply to all of file. Now it's gone in. And if I put my interpreter bar on, I'll show you. See, it's, it's taking it out of contracted to uncontracted. And this, again, is where we could go in and adjust it for our student for their contractions. If we, didn't, if we wanted it partially contracted, we could do that in our grade relaxer. OK, the last thing that I wanted to show you, we are running out of time. I didn't think I'd talk this long. There are some um, keyboard shortcuts real quick that I'll show you. So um, I'm just going to show you on this page. So um, if I did Control-A, that highlights everything. And then I could go um, Control-C to copy it. And I could go New, Work Area, Control-V would paste it. Now, I probably did the whole 109 pages because I did the whole file. But anyway, it's coming. There we go. So I copied and pasted it. So Control-A, I selected all. Control-C was copy. And Control-V um, was paste. And then you can do a Control-F is find. So then I can go, I want to find, let's say, and, and I want to replace it with four, and I want to replace all. So that's, that's your control F is find. Control O is open. Control P is print. So either for embossing or printing. Control S is to save a file. So that'll bring it up where I want to save it. I want to save it on my desktop. Novel, save, and that'll be on my desktop. Control X, so if I highlight this line, a partial line, Control X, it'll get rid of it. And I think, oh goodness, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want to cut that out of there. I can go Control Z and it'll bring it back. So a Control Z is undo. So I know that there are people, like Gala for sure, uses a lot more of those shortcut keyboard shortcuts than I do. Um, and she probably has more of a list than what I've showed you now. We are at 429. I was hoping we'd have time for questions. I hope the pace was OK. I know that I probably didn't share as much advanced as what the program does. There are other things Braille 2000 does. If you have any questions about what was done today, or if there's something specific that you are hoping you'd see today and didn't, you can um, contact me for sure. I'm happy to answer your emails. And if there are a lot of questions on things we didn't cover today more in depth, I know Bob goes way, way more in depth. Um, and if you're finding yourself that you need the program to do more than what I showed you today, then please feel free to contact me, and uh, we can work that out together. So We could always, we could always go uh, part two down the road, Wendy. For sure. For sure we could. So I'm looking at my clock saying 4.30, so I'm done. Excellent. Well, that was, that was uh, wonderful. Thank you very much for your time, Wendy, and uh, hoping that this was beneficial to all of uh, you out there, and uh, I think uh, if there's anything that uh, you know came up, came to mind, uh, I'm sure Wendy wouldn't mind uh, to answer a question, uh, you know, via email.
So with that, we will uh, wrap it up and uh, have a great evening, everyone.